Hello everybody and welcome back. We will continue our first chapter in chemistry which talks about the atomic structure. We mentioned in the last time the uh, cathode rays experiment and as we have said we will mention the contributions of some scientists in reaching to the reality of the atomic structure as we know it now. In the year 1897, a scientist called Thompson made a model of the atom. His contribution is that he put the presence of electrons in his model and he defined the atom as a mass of uniform positive charges which are surrounded by the electrons which are negatively charged which finally lead to uh, the presence of the atom in the neutral state the atom is neutrally charged so he said that the atom is a sphere of uniform positive charges which contain some negatively charged uh, particles which are the electrons that make this atom neutral this is the first part um, of our episode today so that was the Thomson's atomic model he said so. Then in the year 1911, there was a scientist called Rutherford. Rutherford made a, an atomic model which, which uh, gave or which uh, made a great contribution in order to um, let the scientists move further and know more about the atomic structure. It had a great uh, contribution and it was put into the consideration of a lot of scientists in their next um, researches in order to find the atomic structure. But we won't talk about this atomic model now, we will talk about it in the next video. What we will talk about now is the fundamentals and the ideas which provided uh, which was provided to Rutherford in order to let him or help him to make his atomic model. Rutherford had two students which were Geiger and Marston. Geiger and Marston. And in the year 1911 they performed a very important uh, laboratory experiment. They made a model, as we can see here. Um, they used a lead box. The lead box contained a source of alpha particles. So this source produced alpha particles. Alpha particles are very similar in their structure to the nuclei of helium. So, this source was emanating alpha particles. The alpha particles were produced like in a ray through a hole in this lead box. Then, they put in front of the lead box a metallic sheet. This metallic sheet was um, put in the form of a circle but incomplete circle so there was kind of an opening in front of the uh, hole in the lid box in order to let the alpha rays particle uh, pass from the lid box into this metallic chip. Um, the metallic chip was lined from the inside by a layer of zinc sulfide this was very important in order to um, deduce 
the places where the alpha particles ray hit the metallic chip because it, it made kind of blows and it was possible to count the places where the alpha particles ray hit the metallic chip by counting the, uh, the, the glowing points on the metallic chip in order to know where did the ray hit this metallic chip. So when the, when the ray hit the metallic chip, it hit it in a particular, some particular points. Next, uh, they put in front of this uh, alpha particles ray, they put a layer of gold. So when they hit, when they put a layer of gold in front of the alpha particles ray, something changed. Some glowing points remained as they were, so this indicates that um, the alpha particles passed through the layer of gold and hit the metallic sheet at the same points, and some uh, glowing points were made. The glowing points which were made seems kind of deflected. So the alpha particles hit the layer of gold, then they were deflected. And finally, some of the alpha particles were rejected. They hit the layer of gold and they were reflected back as they didn't pass through this layer of gold. The point that they wanted to prove is, or the point that they wanted to know is, the structure of the atom inside this layer of gold. We said that some glowing points remained as they were, and this indicates that the alpha particles passed through this. And this means that there is no density in these atoms, or in these parts. And other alpha particles were reflected. It means that they hit a very dense object that uh, didn't allow the alpha particles to pass through. And the third group was deflected, indicating that it was or it hit a less dense object. The ratio of the deflected alpha particles and the passing alpha particles was a very high percentage or a very high ratio, while the reflected alpha particles were very few, indicating that the dense part of the atom is a little or a small part. So, based on these fundamentals or these findings, as a conclusion from this experiment, Rutherford built his atomic model, of course, concluding the nucleus, the electrons, and um, the atom as a whole object. What did this atomic model look like? And what was the uh, what was the opinion of the other scientists uh, of this model? That's what we will know in the next episode. And until then, thank you for watching and see you.